and welcome to the top of the hour, folks. I'm Mark Johnston, your host here at Vid5 Conference, uh, sponsored by our great friends at Laurentian Bank Securities. And we are at the top of the last hour of a robust three-day conference that has been stellar all the way through. And uh, we welcome a very special uh, company to our final spot here at Vid Conferences, which is Star Peak Mining. I have the great pleasure of welcoming Jonathan Moore, the chair and CEO, and Yves Rougeri, the vice president of exploration. Gentlemen, welcome to the series. Great. Thanks for having us. It's good Our to be pleasure. here. Thank you very much. Good to have you here, gentlemen. I'm going to step off the stage here, let you take over with your presentation. I'll see you back for the Q&A. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, really, I'm uh, just going to say a few words on general um, formation of how this company came about. And then uh, I'm going to leave it off to Eve, who uh, will take you some through some of the technicals. Um, Really, I want to just be uh, point out Star Peak has been a really fast grower in the last year. Um, this is a company which uh, was formed about a year and a half ago and really um, hit it hard. And, uh, uh, you know, with when I say hit it hard, we, we really got the drills going early. And we, um, you know, there's a saying in life where it's sometimes better to be lucky than smart. Well, we definitely were lucky when we first got going here. Uh, but it also took this, some smarts putting it together and, uh, you know, guys like Eve here on in the technical side and, and the people that we have working in the ground has, has made this all possible. So I really wanted to point that out. Um, Star Peak uh, form, formed uh, its company um, basically focused on Quebec assets. Uh, we were originally focused in around the Amex discovery area at the Peron property. As everybody has probably seen, Amex has made a monster discovery. And uh, we were all thrilled by it. And uh, really, we thought that there was more to this area. So we aggressively acquired land directly east to their discovery and then added some interesting past producing uh, material, which we'll get into, and um, really just started owning in on the work. Uh, but before we get going, a um, little bit of background about myself. Uh, I've been in the markets for about 25 years total, uh, originally with Canaccord up in Canada. Uh, in 2008, I got lucky on a transaction and I didn't really have to worry about other people's money anymore. And I decided to bring my skills to the public space. And uh, I got into finding assets and taking them public through the Canadian marketplace. And a uh, year and a half ago, Star Peak was formed. Uh, others that uh, I would like to point out, Cyrus Driver, who is based in Vancouver, is a, uh, our CFO, sits on a number of mining companies as CFO, is a... Um, is active in the community, a very successful investor at the same time, but he drives our financial side and uh, basically heads up uh, anything to do with finance. Others, uh, Ron Bourgeois, French Canadian, people can read about him right there uh, when you have the time. Uh, very powerful addition to the board, has been in the Canadian mining space for, oh God, 40, going on 40 or 50 years, uh, brings a, a huge value to our company. And a recent addition, a, young, a little younger, a younger geologist, uh, Reagan Glazier, based in British Columbia. I've known from some time growing as he grew up through coming through college and university. And uh, he also sits on a board of uh, Free Gold Ventures, uh, which is a very uh, well-funded explorer in um, up in the uh, up in the up in the Yukon area. Um, in addition to the board, we've we've attracted some some quality uh, technical people. I made reference to Amex and Amex's discovery, and this is an important feat and important thing for us. Is uh, when we made our, I would say, our first discovery hole where we hit a, a very big VMS uh, VMS hole, and you know that's what we are. We're a VMS company. We've made a very big, uh, you know, a, sorry, a growing deposit. I should add. Um, the founder and chairman of Amex, Dr. Jacques Trottier, uh, came on as my chief technical advisor. So I think anytime you see, um, you know, a big discovery who you're basically, you know, you're, you're basing your model behind, so to speak, with kind of the founder seeing what we're doing next door, him giving us the, uh, the nod and saying, look, I really want to be a part of what you guys are doing. So that was a, a big feat for our company. And he came on our uh, as chief technical advisor about six months ago. And then Eve, uh, who's uh, sitting right on your screen there. Eve, do you want to say a couple of things about your background? 
Yeah, only the good ones. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a graduate of the UCAM, which is the same university Jacques was teaching at at the time I was there. And uh, I've been involved in exploration for over 50, 40 years, sorry. And I was heavily involved in the discovery uh, phase and the definition phase and the early development of the Louvicor uh, base metal mine in Val d'Or, which was a 15 million ton uh, high grade copper, zinc, silver, gold deposit. And I've been involved with, uh, with several other uh, discoveries. And uh, I've been running a, another junior uh, myself for the last 15 years, but uh, I'm really happy to be on board with uh, Jacques and with uh, Jonathan on what's a very exciting uh, VMS play going forward. Beautiful. Um, take you through the next slide. Uh, the basically shares outstanding were uh, that number is a little bit higher. It's about 39.5 million shares currently uh, outstanding. Share count is very low. Uh, we've managed to really do this, in my mind, beautifully. Uh, we've raised in excess of eight and a half million dollars and, and managed to keep that share count to a minimum. Um, it uh, definitely shows in the market. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's had some good runs. Uh, we're a better company today than we have been when we hit our highs of you know, over four dollars a share uh, roughly six, seven months ago. Uh, market cap currently it sits at about 75 million. Management insiders own 40%. Uh, I'm owned institutionally uh, at about 30 to 35%, and the rest is um, obviously just re retail or, or um, you know, individuals. Three properties that we have picked up, uh, the main property being the new Mattel property. This is the one where we have focused all of our attention to to date. This is where we have made our discovery in the VMS uh, VMS uh, style deposit and uh, all the work and money that we have raised has been targeted towards this asset. Um, we have just scratched the surface on it. It uh, really has uh, a lot of, lot of meat to it and uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, we currently sit on just shy of $6 million cash. Uh, so we have, um, you know, we're well cashed up and uh, running two drill rigs currently. Uh, there's a, you know, obviously that, that money will last some time. The good thing about this area is the uh, dollar goes a very long way. We uh, were drilling at about 185 Canadian per meter all in. Uh, that does not include assaying, I, I might add, but uh, the, the, as you can probably tell from comparative to anywhere else in the world, that's, uh, that's very, very, very cheap. And it's the Canadian peso, I call it, the Canadian dollar. So it's, uh, that also adds... Uh, uh, to the uh, to the economics uh, for what we're looking at. Uh, two other plays that we also acquired when we put this all together as well, the Russo and the Turgeon Lake. These are both uh, more gold uh, targeted areas. We have um, great targets and great plans for it. However, with what's staring us in the face on the new metal, it totally makes sense for us to just keep focus on that for the time being. And there will be plans to get in and uh, do some work on Rousseau and Turgeon. Uh, very high grade gold play um, on both. So, you know, they will be, um, they will be looked at in, in the very near future. Um, Eve, do you want to go from here and just kind of take us through more from the, you know, from, from your technical side and, and, and uh, really, uh, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. All right, thank you, Jonathan. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's a nice slide showing our regional location. The uh, the Normantown property is is way up here, uh, just north of the town of Lasar, which is on the north side of the Abitibi, the great greenstone belt with all the massive sulfide and gold deposits in it. Uh, we have excellent road access and every uh, possible uh, exploration or mining service available, uh, as as well as uh, expert uh, personnel. Uh, we're only 100 kilometers north of Naranda, where the smelter lies, the Horn Copper Smelter, and about 200 over from Timmins, where, uh, where they used to have a smelter as well. And uh, we're very lo well located in a region where there's numerous mines. We'll see on the next slide, I believe, uh, where we lie again in the middle of the slide. Uh, and to the north, we have the Casabarati Gold Mine, and further north from that is the Detour Lake Mine, and to the east of that is the uh, the, the new Fenelon uh, projects and Matagami. And to the south of us, are, of course, are all the famous Timmins and Naranda, Kirkland and Valdor and Malartic uh, gold and VMS deposits. 
Uh, we're right next to the uh, Amex property, uh, a pa payroll property of Amex Resources, and uh, and and uh, we're we're right next to that. Uh, the the regional geology is uh, as, again we're right next to the payroll property, which is covering uh, a greenstone belt or a wedge of greenstone belt, which is called the Normital Volcanic Complex. Uh, everything here is called Normital based on the name of the town, but also the name of the mine that was there for 50 years that Noranda built uh, way back in the 1920s. Uh, geologically, we go from, uh, from the north to the south uh, in, in age, and we have an entire volcanic complex. In yellow are the rhyolitic type rocks, and sitting just on top of that is the Normital mine horizon, along which the Normital mine occurs, but also the new discovery, Normetmar deposit, that uh, we are advancing at this time. At a closer scale, uh, the, the the red uh, we can see the where the the little star, sorry, on the right here, is where the Normetal mine was. This was a huge deposit for the time, over 10 million tons at classic uh, Abitibi VMS uh, grades: two percent copper, five percent zinc, uh, half a half a gram of gold, and and an ounce and a half or so of silver. Very typical, and uh, and the discovery zone that we are working on now is called the Normetmar deposit. There was a deposit there known on surface where they had a historical resource of, of, of about 300,000 tons at over 10% zinc going down to about 1,400 feet. And uh, and we're working on that trend as we'll see on, a, on the longitudinals further down and uh, on the extension of that and the expansion of that at this time. To the west of us is the Peril property, of course, with the where Amex has discovered the eastern gold zones. But they also made a, a very interesting discovery about four kilometers west of uh, our deposits along the same horizon. And they call it the QF zone, and they hit a pretty interesting intersection, uh, which is an indication that the entire horizon over several, maybe 10, maybe more kilometers, could be fertile for the occurrence of uh, massive sulfides. This is just a quick slide on the Amex uh, gold discovery. That that gold lithology uh, continues on and through the uh, the the uh, the new metal property. And uh, although we're not working on that right now, we definitely have targets and potential for gold occurrences along strike from Amex on the new metal property. And Amex, of course, is known for these super high grade intersections. Uh, across uh, quite a width. The Normatal mine itself was discovered in 1925, which is right at the beginning of the, the Quebec side of the, uh, the, uh, the Abitibi Greenstone Belt uh, 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 exploration and development. 10 million tons, and what's unique about it, of course, is that it, it goes down to two and a half kilometers right from surface, so it's by far uh, the longest deposit, maybe after Horn uh, sorry, about after the uh, the Kid Creek deposit, it may be the deepest uh, deposit we have. Uh, most deposits uh, for massive sulfides are in the kilometer range, so this is a very special deposit, and we think that lends a lot of credence to the potential uh, elsewhere on the property at depth. Again, we come back to the geology, and just to talk about the Normetmar deposit, which was just shy of a kilometer to the west of the Normetal deposit. Uh, again, it was discovered because there is an outcrop and there's actually a, a very small open pit uh, on surface and there, uh, there, are, uh, there are some workings that go underground. Uh, we're not sure how much was mined, but we know it's only in the few hundreds of feet uh, in, in terms of depth. And the historic estimate is, is not something that we can, uh, we can uh, trust or use going forward, but it is an indication of the potential. So they had marked off 300,000 tons at 11% zinc uh, down below 1,000 feet, and uh, and think we we think we can expand quite significantly on that, as as indicated by this hole back in 1996 of 17 meters of 7.7 .7 zinc. Uh, here's a representation of the Normetal deposit on the right hand side and all the part the part of it that was mined and this uh, actually is only about half the depth extent of the mine so the it would actually go twice as deep as that to cover the 2.5 kilometers that it, it covers 
And on the left-hand side is the Norm-Metmar trend, which we are working, which is where we've found the, the two, uh, two big zones at this point and where we believe there's tremendous potential uh, at depth. Here's another, this is the Norm et Mar uh, longitudinal now, and this is a, a com, com, compendium, a compendium of the results of our drilling. So what we're calling the upper zone and the deeper zone. So in both cases, uh, there was a very deep drill hole drilled along very close to the, the body or the, the, the horizon that hosts these mineralizations. And when we came in on the property, uh, we did a, a downhole electromagnetic survey and we picked up significant anomalies where these two blobs are now seen. And basically we've been drilling those two occurrences since last year with tremendous success. Uh, we've pre we're pretty close to finishing the top half, the upper zone, as you can see the pattern of drilling. And so there's a whole lot of work to do to figure out what we've got and what more we can do in it before we, we try to go forward with resource definition. Uh, whereas on the, uh, and of course this zone has significant intersections as you can see on, on, the, on the slide here, 12 meters at 20% zinc, you know, 20 and a half meters of 6% zinc and, and so on. It's a, it's a very significant uh, occurrence. Uh, and this is a good example of it. This brown stuff is a high grade zinc. That's almost pure as phalarite. So that's, that's in the 40% range uh, assaying. Uh, in the brown stuff, whereas further up, the grade will be somewhat lower. This now is the is the lower zone, so the the deep zone we call it, because it's it's between 600 and 900 meters vertical depth, and uh, so most of these we we were we've been drilling first holes, so mother holes, I guess you could call them, and then we we wedge holes off them in order to uh, pick up the deposit going upward from those first holes. And we've had quite a bit of success, but we're still, we still have a lot of work left to do because we're all, we've only drilled the core of it based on the geophysical anomaly. And so we're gonna have to pattern our way out uh, so that we can cover the kind of area that the, the old Norm et al mine did. So we, we have uh, quite a distance to cover and a lot of holes to do in order to get proper coverage of that uh, deposit as it occurs. Uh, this is an example of the deeper zone is, is more copper rich, which would be consistent with what's seen in many uh, VMS deposits. And in this case, uh, we can see uh, the yellow, the, the more yellow material is going to be copper rich versus the, the, the brown will be more zinc rich and the, the, uh, the, dull, uh, the dull stuff is going to be the pyrite, which nobody wants, but that comes with it. And uh, so this is a very nice intersection, uh, four and a half meters of 3% copper. And we're, we're hoping to pick up a lot more of that as we go along with the drilling. Uh, this is some of the work that our contractors or our project uh, contractors are doing. We have contractors called uh, Laurentia Exploration, and they're a band of young, uh, young geologists in their, uh, in their 30s mainly who are greatly experienced in massive sulfides. They worked for Mata in Matagami for Glencore for years, and they brought all of their expertise to bear on this project. So they're very good at, 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 uh, at, at uh, drilling deep targets, at doing geochemistry for identifying uh, patterns and vectoring towards uh, mineralization, and at interpretation as well of uh, borehole electromagnetic surveys. They have the, the ex-manager uh, of geophysics for Noranda up in Matagami, who's, who's a, well, a recognized world-class uh, geophysicist uh, doing the work on the project. So we have first-rate uh, people working on this project to help us get along. And this is a good example. Uh, to the right is the stratigraphy. And we're looking to the west. And uh, the holes are coming down from the north towards the south. And what we see is a very, uh, very uh, easy, uh, uh, to understand geology. So there's nothing that's very complicated here. Uh, and the geochemistry, which is what this is based on in the geology, support uh, this simple uh, geo geological model. And that's excellent from an exploration standpoint because the horizon where all of the, the mineralization occurs is very well defined and very easy to identify. So uh, going forward along strike, because we have about five kilometers of strike of this uh, horizon, uh, we can target uh, areas based on 
the results of uh, this geoscientific work, which is uh, borehole EM and geochemistry and, uh, and vectoring. And uh, this is a good example of that. Again, the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, basically, the, the only thing we want to show here is that we've been drilling these two zones. You can see the upper zone and the low and the deep zone. But the victoring in the geochemistry indicates that there's significant potential at depth. And we haven't started uh, drilling any of that yet. That's that's in the forthcoming year that we're going to attack a target such as that one. This is property scale. Uh, and what we're seeing here is the mag map. And down at the bottom where the star is, is the, is the Normital horizon, this thing here. And on that, we get the Normital mine, and we get the Normitmar uh, occurrence. I'll undo that now. There. And, and so uh, what we've identified here, the, there's, there are dikes to the north here, these, these dark uh, purple. Everybody knows now after three days of this geology that those are magnetic highs. And so these are dikes and we have uh, felsic intrusives in those areas. And so it's, it's a pretty complex and, 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 and encouraging map because in geology, we typically like to have a lot of change and differentiation. And so these mags are suggesting all sorts of potential for mineralization. So we're looking at clusters of VTAM anomalies down along the horizon. Uh, along the Normital horizon, but we're also looking to the north for, uh, for, for other VTEMs that have been found from a survey that we did. And there's also some gold potential based on historic uh, samples on, on rocks found at surface. So there's, it's a very busy property. And uh, there is the Normital horizon, which is by far the main uh, target. And we have VTEMs to the west and to the east of the Normital and the Normit Normit Mar deposits. But we also have to definite uh, anomalies of, of both for VMS and gold elsewhere along the property. So this is another representation of that. This is the, the way we're doing the work right now. So we're, here we have the Normit Mar deposit in the middle of the property. And we've started spreading out on, on, on 300 meter centers, drilling holes down to 1,000 and 1,500 feet, three to 500 meters. Uh, and doing borehole electromagnetic surveys in the holes in an attempt to find the next center of mineralization. There, there's a simple pattern here between the Normet Mar and the Normital deposits at 900 meters distance. Uh, but, uh, and so, and we do have VTEM anomalies and, and some historic minor mineralization 900 meters to the east as well as to the west. And so we're going to follow up along that with extensive drilling and uh, geophysical and geochemical sampling in order to uh, find the next, uh, the next cluster of mineralization. And, and uh, we think there's a lot of potential. This is a longitudinal representation of the slide we just looked at. And we can see where the, the holes will be, will be drilled down to. And uh, again, here, the, uh, the Normital mine is only represented to half its depth. So there's twice that depth of mineral of economic mineralization going down, so that gives you an idea of the potential of the entire property, uh, based on the the discovery of the Normit Mar trend, which is similar to the Normital, that we can find the same thing once again. So it's a very uh, significant VMS uh, property, by all accounts. Uh, we're back to this uh, the the Normital volcanic complex. Uh, slide here because it shows our, our, our gold properties to the east. So from the new metal property to the east, we go to the Rousson and Turgeon Lake properties, uh, which both have uh, at surface uh, high grade uh, gold occurrences. Uh, and, and even at the Rousseau property, there's a small historic resource estimate uh, that was 30,000 tons of 12 grams per ton. Whereas the Lac Turgeon property and uh, outcrops on the edge of the lake uh, and some drill holes hit as much as uh, 18, 19 grams uh, of gold. There's been very little work done on those occurrences, and uh, we're going to go after them when we when we get a break or a breather from the the major project. But uh, most of our attempt at work is going to be done on the on the main project. So this is again the the numbers that we're dealing with for the gold projects and uh, very little work has been done so very much left to be done and and left to be discovered 
so if we go back to the uh, the generalization, uh, the ongoing well-financed drilling program on the deposit, which is still open in several directions. I mean, first, the deep zone has still got to be defined, uh, either you know, up to 100 meters on either side and up and down. And we also have to go looking at depth below all that. And so we have to uh, see how we're going to do that uh, using deep drilling. Uh, luckily, as, as Jonathan explained, uh, drilling is very inexpensive uh, in the Abitibi compared to other places. I think I heard a talk yesterday where someone was talking about a thousand bucks. Was it a foot or was it a meter in uh, in Nevada? And uh, we're lucky enough that we can get a lot more footage for a lot less money in, in the Abitibi at this time. Uh, so we have robust brownfield targets waiting to be drilled close to the known deposit based on classic geophysics, geological modeling, and geochemistry. Uh, and we have property exploration targets at the scale of the property itself, based on the VTAM anomalies and the gold occurrences. <coughs> Excuse me. So the regional striking trend containing the known deposits and newly discovered ones, Amex goes as far, Amex is four kilometers away. So within that distance, we feel very confident that there's very much potential for additional discoveries on the, uh, the new metal property. And we add to that the underexplored properties with existing gold occurrences uh, at Turgeon Lake and Russo. Uh, so the advantage of uh, being on a property where there was a, a long-lived mine is that there's a pretty robust knowledge of the geology. And, and the advantage of using people that have uh, expertise in VMS exploration and development and mining is essentially that we, 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 know what we, we know what we're seeing when we see it. In a lot of cases in exploration, we find things and we're not sure what we're dealing with and, and we have a lot of figuring out to do. In this case, we, we start out with a lot of knowledge and uh, everything we, we do and we find uh, can be explained and put into the model which fits with the Norm et al. Uh, historic deposit itself. Uh, the property, of course, is in, in Quebec where uh, we have, all, all again, excellent road access and proximal mining services the smelting infrastructures, and there's a there's a zinc uh, finishing smelter down in Valleyfield, which is right next to Montreal, uh, and uh, and of course Quebec is well known as a mining friendly jurisdiction. Uh, and then uh, finally, there's the favorable zinc world market, where uh, commodity prices are, are quite high. Uh, copper is as well, and uh, that's what we're counting on going forward, in terms of uh, working it. So at this point, we've drilled uh, over 35,000 meters in 84 holes, and uh, we're financed to go to 60 or 80,000 meters. And, uh, and, and what we want to do with that is, is, is build tonnage and, and make new discoveries and uh, de to determine new discovery potentials within the property limits itself. And uh, to that, we will add uh, at some time some work on the gold properties to move uh, the Turgeon Lake and Russo properties forward. So every as, as the last line says here, every aspect of Star, Star Peak's assets point out to growth and value creation through the recent successful exploration strategies. So I think that's uh, pretty much what I have to say. Yeah, well said. Thank Ace. you very much. Gentlemen, thank you both for a terrific uh, walk through the company, where things are at and where things are headed. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to round out the conference today with a, a very strong overview and thorough tour. So at this point, as always, there are questions coming in from our audience around the world. We're going to jump in and get to as many of these as we can as we wind down for the day. Uh, very curious your thoughts from uh, various points in the globe here. Uh, we have a question that comes, gentlemen, with your current cash position, how much longer can you continue to drill the property? So with us currently uh, just shy of six million, um, we're fully budgeted for 80,000 meters. Uh, actually, probably more closer to 90 with that last raise. We um, we might up it, um, you know, bit, but what's the difference between 80 and 90? Um, currently, I think with two rigs going um, full bore right now, uh, we look like we'll last right in until, you know, July, August of, of next year. Uh, without having to worry about anything. We do have some warrants as well that are in the money. Um, that's, you know, uh, obviously a, a, a play that we could have uh, if we need anything. Um, but, you know, again, I want to stress that we've really done this 
by keeping our share count small. And mm -hmm. I, I and personally, in my investments, I love to have companies that have, you know, 40 million shares outstanding. I mean, it's, it's, you don't get it too often and to have a full, a full financed mining company that's doing 80,000 meters of drilling uh, with 40 million shares out. That's um, mm -hmm. that seems to be pretty good. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> Moving around the, the, the plate a little bit here. Do you plan to do any work at the Normetal mine that the company acquired in its early days? Do you believe there's more work to be done around the existing mine? Well, Eve, why don't you take that one? Well, yeah, sure. Uh, the, the mine, they mine 10 million tons over two and a half kilometers uh, mm -hmm. vertically. So the, to the mine itself, we don't see it as having much potential. I mean, uh, but the information that the mine has to deliver for for the uh, for for geoscientific knowledge and for vectoring towards discovery a long strike on the property and elsewhere actually is very high and and so what one of the things we are doing is we're trying to model the entire deposit uh, a 3d model it with all of the information now, some of that information is very hard to find nowadays mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we're, we're looking so we have some people doing the de detective work to try to find that information so that we can use it and apply it to the rest of the work because again it was two and a half kilometers deep and we have a trend right next door where we're we've drilled it close to a thousand meters and and there's no indication that it's stopping so what is underneath that you know so uh, the potential is tremendous but the mine itself uh we're not sure uh, what potential is left and and there is the question of uh, the uh, the tailings which is a managed facility that belongs to the town and so there's there's there are other things in consideration as well. Okay, thank you for that, Eve, very much. Uh, looking down the list here, with a couple of other questions from different points of the uh, conversation coming in. What is the significance, gentlemen, of finding a VMS style deposit? Is it more favorable compared to other discoveries in the area? You want you want to try that one? I, I I'm happy Eve, to take you, it. But you're the VMS expert. Why don't you take okay. that one? <laughs> well, one of the advantages of VMS, of course, is they're polymetallic. And, hmm. and therefore, you, you're spreading the risk around. Uh, the other advantage, of course, is that uh, an economic VMS deposit has a lot more metal, you know, per pound or per ton than than a, than a, a precious metal type deposit. Hmm. So uh, you're getting a lot more bang for the buck. Uh, there's also a huge infrastructure for that. Uh, there's also a big market for base metals. Always is around the world. I mean, yes. you know, the, there's. It's 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 an equal component to society. I mean, everybody needs copper and they need zinc mm. for everything that we do. So they're very much in demand. So they're not volatile the way, let's say, precious metals might be. Fair enough. Thank you for that. Very fair answer. <clears throat> we often like to go to the 30,000 foot or bird's eye view, as I call it, looking at the company trajectory, gentlemen. So I'm wondering what your strategy for the company will be, say, over the next three to five years. Let's look a little longer down the pipeline there. Well, I think really um, at this stage, it's just drill as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my job is to make sure that the company has enough gas in the tank in order for it to get to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you have a company that is just current, it's just every day, two drills nonstop and just mm -hmm. going on and on and on, you know, you're building up and you're you're building up size and 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 hopefully you're building this thing up to to show everybody that this thing is as big as what we you know what we think it has potential to be. Mm. I think a really good uh, comparison is just look and see what Amex has done next door. And you know, Amex started off. We all start off with a five thousand meter drill program. You you move it to twenty thousand. You move it to sixty. Mm -hmm. For lo and behold, I think Amex is now up to three hundred thousand meters. And wow. you know, over a three year span, I mean, that really is a is a template that I think that I'd like to repeat. Um, you know, they've hit gold assets, they've hit low, low grade zones, they've hit high grade zones, they've now gone into VMS type, type, uh, type, uh, mm -hmm. uh, dis, uh dis deposits. So really it's, it's, I mean, the excitement is for an investor here is that if you have a company that is actively drilling and nonstop drilling, uh, 12 months of the year, really, that's what you want to be a part of because it's the time when you're, for instance, getting into British Columbia and you, and you have a shut such a short mining drilling season mm -hmm. you know you, you got to wait for the next season well in this part of the world and what we're doing this thing is 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 just constant and just needs to be drilled and drilled and drilled and the more success we have and the more we hit obviously that drilling continues um i'm a firm believer also in just you know stick to what you're good at and that's proving this thing up to a level where you know you um you put it on a silver platter and uh you know you see who's interested in, in, in coming and taking you on to the next level so that's kind of what my you know strategy would be yeah. Excellent. Excellent foresight. Thank you for that. 
Uh, let's look into 2022 specifically and ask a question we like to pose to every company, which is what's the biggest challenge ahead for the new year? Hmm. Um, well, I'm very confident in, you know, the stages of these, um, you know, the commodity markets in particular, mm -hmm. these base metals with zinc and copper, I think really we're in the second inning. I think mm -hmm. there's a long way to go in terms of upside on, 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 uh, you know, in terms of pricing and the longevity that this will have. Yes. Uh, challenges moving forward, I think, um, you know, it, it was probably a concern as we went through this pandemic. It was, you know, getting quality work, quality, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's fine to get a drill rig, but if you have no one to operate it, what are you going to do with it? And, right. uh, but we seem to have solved those problems and we're, we're thrilled with Laurentia. Laurentia being our, our uh, uh, exploration, you know, with the people that are doing the work for us. They are also the, um, I might add, I don't think we mentioned it. They, they're they actually the ones doing all the work for Amex as well. Okay. So these guys know the area. They know, you know, they know uh, the geology and and we've created a, a very good relationship with Amex as well. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of data that, uh, that, you know, we're just trying to make this area as big as possible for for both parties because it, I think it just makes the whole package look that much more attractive if, if we're hitting and they're hitting. So, um so I think we've solved the kind of the, the personnel problems. Um, mm -hmm. And I think just moving forward, I just, uh, you know, my, you know, if I could just talk more on the market side, I think really I'd like to see a, a cleaner marketplace on the TSX market where we currently are. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a stockbroker background. So I would like to add that uh, I'd like to see the markets get cleaned up, getting away from this algorithmic trading and uh, mm -hmm. all this nonsense we're seeing on the short side and whatever it might be. But that is a huge problem uh, that we have encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are a very active company. We trade good volume. But um, if anything I could ask for for a Christmas would be uh, the regulators would take take charge and uh, and make all that uh, that silly trading uh, um, outlawed and, and uh, forbidden. Okay, thank you for that share. Uh, and Eve, of course, as VP of Exploration, I'm always curious, you're with Star Peak Mining, and, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on why specifically with this company versus some of the other competitors? What is it in this company that, that really speaks to your heart? Well, well, I have a close relationship with uh, with some of the people surrounding the companies, and uh, and uh, and I have a I have a real love affair with the VMS uh, as a geologist. I, I, to me, it's by far the most uh, pleasant and happy uh, mm -hmm. time in my career. Uh, behind me, I have pictures of the Louvicour mine uh, that remind me of that. I mean, I just had a great time. I think I think they're most they're the most fascinating types of deposits. Uh, because you can figure them out uh, scientifically, you know, right. and so uh, so I was really when I was uh, approached, I jumped at the opportunity because it's very something uh, very interesting to be involved with. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for that. Eve. Uh, Daniel's asking a question, gentlemen, when do you anticipate to have a reserve report available? Eve? Well, uh, we actually haven't started any work on that front whatsoever. I mean, we're we're in drill mode, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know we're we're still working on the upper deposit. If somebody goes and, and looks at the website and looks at the uh, the information that we have out, you'll see that the, our drilling of the norm at Mar is is still quite uh, narrow if you compared to the size, the width on the longitudinal of the norm metal. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of room left. So that it's 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 pre, uh, premature to uh, think about doing uh, resources or reserves on this project at this time. Uh, what we need is a lot more drilling, a lot more uh, success and results, and we'll go from there. So it'll be a while before we want to go there, sure basically. Enough. That's real and appreciated, absolutely. Gentlemen, we're winding down the session. At this point, I always like to turn the mic back to you in an open way to say, is there anything we haven't touched on, any thoughts or inspirations you want to leave with our audience today as we wind down? Um, no, I just think it's... Uh, I you know, for people just to share in our excitement that, uh, you know, we've uh, done, um, had some early success very quickly in this company. And uh, it's one thing I'm learning about VMS is it's is it's new to me having a VMS deposit. It's, um, you can grow these things very quickly. And mm. once you follow a trend and you, you, uh, you basically keep drilling it, it's, um, uh, you know, you can, you can build these things up very, very, uh, very, very fast. And I think with, the people that we have working and uh, the, the modern techniques that we're using with these BHAM probes and downhole um, indicators, uh, it really is um, exacting our science, so to speak. And and with a lot of the data that we've seen from the past producing mine that we own, 
there's a ton of similarities that we're seeing also on what we're drilling just you know just to the to the west mm -hmm. and uh, i think um, having that model and the base that we have it gives us a huge understanding it's it basically we hit the we hit this this race running i mean it was uh you know we we really kind of uh, i think saved ourselves a lot of a lot of uh, exploration drilling a lot of wasted drilling whatever it might be we 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 managed to get in and hit it right right at the beginning and that really saved us a lot of money and just it just put us in the right position at an early stage. And uh, I think people should um, should realize that. Fantastic, Cher. I appreciate the openness and the on honesty. Eve, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with today? Well, I guess the only point I would make is that VMS deposits in the Greenstone belts uh, in, in the Superior province happen in clusters. Mm -hmm. So it's no surprise that we're finding stuff here. And, and the potential for con continued discoveries is very high based on that. Okay, fantastic. It's always good to leave on an up note. I appreciate, gentlemen, your time and your, your share today with the audience around the world. Uh, for Jonathan and Eve, thank you for being part of the Yavid conference today and certainly taking our uh, leave the best of the last spot uh, to round round up the conference. I really appreciate your time and energy today. Thanks for being with us. And, uh, and we'll say best wishes for the holidays to, to each of you. Same to thank you. you thank much. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, folks, here we are. What a robust three days we've had here at the Vid5 conference sponsored by Laurentian Bank Securities. Our virtual investor day conferences are meant to connect you with the investor, with the leading voices inside companies of interest. And I'd say we've had a winning conference. Once again, I want to thank our generous sponsor, Laurentian Bank Securities, and also our partners on board for this event over the last few days. BTV, Newsfile, Crux Investor, First Phase, and Mining Network. And as we wind down our conference and knowing we've thanked the companies from day one and day two, I'd like to acknowledge once again the featured companies on our final day today. We had the great pleasure of hosting Gold Royalty, Elemental Resources, Origin Royalties, Azimut Exploration, Vox Royalties, Galway Metals, Prime Mining, Oh My Gold, and Star Peak Mining. And your participation as viewers and guests uh, in the conference has made this Virtual Investor Day conference a huge success, folks. Thank you for bringing your interest and curiosity to the event. This is why we do what we do. My name again is Mark Johnston. On behalf of my partner, Joanne Jobin, and the entire VID team, best wishes for a great holiday season. And we look forward to the next VID conference in 2022. Take care.